I'm here today to talk to you about uh, dark matter. And one of the first things to say about dark matter is that um, it is in faraway galaxies, and it did exist a long time ago, but it also exists right here in our galaxy and right now. So to that degree, it's, uh, it's not just about what happened a long time ago in the past or what happened far away. It's what's going on here and now. Dark matter is um, material that has some mass because we know that massive objects affect other things gravitationally, but which doesn't emit any light. And that's why we call it dark, because everything out there in the sky that we can see emits photons and we register those photons with our eyes or with telescopes. But dark matter is out there, but it doesn't emit light. And so it's a very natural name. It could also be called heavy dark stuff because it also is massive, it weighs something. It looks like dark matter is surrounding all visible matter, like a galaxy. It's surrounding a galaxy like a cloud around the galaxy and inside the galaxy. It's called a halo. So dark matter seems to be surrounding visible matter and the surrounding galaxies and also clusters of galaxies. And when clusters of galaxies are very far away, it looks like there are filaments of dark matter connecting them. So dark matter connects everything visible, but it's not everywhere. It's not like a blanket thing that's everywhere. It seems like it's very specific, not very specific, it seems to be at least specific to luminous matter. The similarities are they have they both have a certain mystery about them because uh, the force is something that uh, the heroes in Star Wars control, but you can't really see it. You see its effects, but you don't see sort of the force manifesting itself uh, alone. Um, uh, and that is true of dark matter also. You don't see the dark matter directly, but you see its effects on a massive scale. The difference is that those effects for dark matter are on the grand scale, the, the galactic or the astrophysical scale, whereas the force, at least in the science fiction world of Star Wars, is something that humans, special humans, can control. The only way that we know it exists is because it tugs on the matter that we can see out in the world, namely stars in the universe, stars and galaxies. and. Uh, those things get tugged upon gravitationally by the dark matter and they move in orbits that would be different than if there were no dark matter around. But the dark matter itself is not emitting light and so we can't perceive it, we only perceive its effects. There's basically two reasons for that. I mean, one is uh, it's a fascinating and sort of top priority uh, subject for 21st century physics. It's a, it's a long-standing problem that was sort of discovered in the middle of the 20th century, and now to think that we're kind of made a lot of progress in understanding it, but have not actually directly detected dark matter particles, that's what motivates us scientifically. But as a nuclear security lab, there's another reason to pursue dark matter, and that is the very sophisticated detectors that we build in order to discover it. Turns out they have very practical applications. So one of the things that I do is I build detectors that are similar to dark matter detectors, and I use them to monitor the operations of nuclear reactors from outside of the reactor. So we have both uh, a real curiosity as scientists as to how dark matter works, but we also have an interest as citizens and people who recognize that there's a problem of lots of nuclear materials in the world to keep track of that material. And these detectors help us do that. 